I always dreamed of myself being like the hero of a game. Come on, Irvin. Come on, Irvin. Like Dad said, both hands. The game was close and tight. And keep your head up. Keep your head up. And then they would call my play, and I would win the game at the buzzer. All right, here we go. This is it. This is it. Irvin Johnson has the ball. He's dribbling around. Three seconds left on the clock. Oh, what a head fake. And he shoots. And just yeah. as I hit it, I always yeah. woke up. Hey, yeah. Junior, did you win? And knew it was yeah. a dream. <laughs> All right. Still undefeated, huh? I guess so. Come on, let's get some lunch. <laughs> That's kind of how it all began. Me, my hoop, my dad, and my basketball. Oh, yeah, and a little bit of magic. Irvin Magic Johnson has reshaped the NBA and basketball itself in his own image. His story begins, however, long before his first professional game. When he was a little guy, the shots that he would have open, he wouldn't take them. You know, he started passing the ball, and he started kind of passing kind of tricky legs. But Magic wants it more, dribble behind the back. Oh, what a play! Slam dunk! His sleight of hand seems to flow effortlessly from a bottomless bag of tricks, but his peerless skills are a product of peerless dedication. We have four or five feet of snow on the ground. He would get up early, go shovel off the court, and shoot. For Irvin, it seems as if practice has made perfect. Kusak, Magic's 18-footer, wins it! Has he ever done it before? You bet he has. Will he ever do it again? Time and time again. Blending style and substance, he is one of sports' greatest winners, and perhaps that has always been his destiny. I think Irvin was in seventh grade, and they told us that Irvin was going to be real talent, you know. How can you tell a kid at that age, you know? <laughs> Even as a child, Irvin's character was apparent. Instilled with a strict work ethic as he grew up in Lansing, Michigan, he learned to play not only with precocious talent, but also with passionate commitment. I love the game so much that I would go out there and just play all day and night, whether I was carrying groceries, whether I was doing something, running an errand for my mom or dad. I was I always had one hand free to dribble that basketball. When the little guy, he had uh, the good fundamentals of basketball that probably he's going to be a pretty good basketball player. We didn't think it would come that quick, you know. As Irving Jr. grew, so too did his reputation. And stunningly, this playground prodigy would become a schoolboy sensation before ever setting foot on a high school basketball court. When he came to Everett, he was announced. People said, oh, wait until Irvin Johnson comes, wait until Irvin Johnson comes. I told all my friends that I had a kid coming in here that would make them forget about every other basketball player in the area or maybe they ever saw, and everybody kind of teased me about that, but we knew we had something special. When we walked in that first game, I'd never seen that gym packed before. I had butterflies in my stomach. I can't even describe it, but uh, when you come up through that door and you can smell that aroma of the popcorn and you hear the band, dun, 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 you know, and you just, oh, man, you just, like you a Superman. Like you a Superman. You just bust through the thing and you go into our trot. Oh, it's over. It's over. From the outset, Irvin more than lived up to his billing. Here's got Johnson on the right wing. Beard 
goes all the way under him. Oh, oh. No matter where we'd go, he did. TV cameras there, news people would read, because they knew he, we had a, a phenomenal player. As the legend of Irvin Johnson continued to grow, his unique skills called for a unique description. I covered the game for the Lansing State Journal, and I congratulated him on the game, and then I said, Irvin, we've got to name you something. And uh, I said, the, the Big E's out because of Elvin Hayes, and Dr. J was out because of uh, Julius Irvin. How about magic? And he says, well, that's OK with me, Mr. Stabler. I didn't think it would stick. Way, the Everett Diego. High School's shining star had been dubbed the basketball wizard, and his magic act is in high demand. The magic man is in town here today. People expect so much from him because of that name. However, this poised teenager remained immune to the hype and clear in his values. I think you seem to love to play basketball so much that the, that just kind of just falls off you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, I really love the game, and uh, I just love playing and getting out there and, uh, you know, hoping our team win. If I'm playing pickup ball, whenever, I just want to win. Winning was something that Magic was already becoming accustomed to. As a senior, he would lead the Everett Vikings to a state championship and captivate an entire community. Johnson moves in, takes underneath the Hunter. Hunter lays it out. Beautiful. This place was just going crazy. And at that point, I really knew that there was something magical about Irvin. He had accomplished everything a high school athlete could dream of and had gained national acclaim. The fantasies of youth were about to become the reality of blooming adulthood. The times of schoolyard innocence were firmly behind him now, and an important decision lay ahead. As the letters come in, I says, Irvin, I'm going to go nuts trying to sort all this stuff out. Let's decide on where you think you want to go to school. And I said, you can go anywhere you want. But for Magic, the decision was incredibly simple. He would enter the big time without ever leaving his own backyard. Is there any questions before I get started? Yeah. Just one question. You know, um, next year I will be uh, attending Michigan State University. Magic's choice was clear. Michigan State University. And so were the terms of his decision. It was just a manner of convincing him that he was not going to play center here. He was not going to play forward. He was going to play Irvin Johnson style of basketball. Magic had achieved the best of both worlds. He would play point guard, the position of his dreams, at Michigan State, the school of his dreams. Seeing them run out, that's what I always wanted to do, run out in the green and white. And I finally got my chance to do that. And play in front of my family. Oh, man. It was almost the first time I felt like crying. I actually just run out and cry because I had reached this next goal, you know, as being a Spartan. At Michigan State, Magic would quickly pick up where he left off in high school. The ball was his to handle, and the show was his to run. It was Irvin's job to distribute the ball, and he has done that. He's been a magician at that. That's why they call him the Magic Man. He sees the open man, he knows when to get the ball to the right person at the right time at the right place. Magic's teammates were also in awe of his uncanny court vision. Irvin's the type of player that could hit you when you were open, and oftentimes he knew you were open before you knew you were. So I got used to playing with him and always watching for the ball because it might come out of, out of nowhere. Having quickly impressed his teammates, Magic would go on to dazzle the college basketball world. As his spectacular performances began to mount. There were so many great memories. It's like when we were four and four and I got hurt uh, against Ohio State who was 8-0 and we needed to beat them. As far as regular season games go, they don't get bigger than this. And I'll tell you, this crowd is ready. Oh, this is what Big Ten is. The 
the Spartans had come to rely on their new star, but they were about to realize exactly how much. With magic igniting them, Michigan State seemed headed for a stunning upset. Ramsey drives the lane right-hander. No good rebound, Magic. Magic falls on the floor. Herb Williams dies him up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The magic and all of a sudden, I sprung my ankle. This could prove tragic for this. There's a hush. There's a hush over this sellout crowd here at the Jenison Fieldhouse. Concern on everyone's faces. Oh my. 30 seconds ago, you couldn't hear yourself. I went out when we were up by about 10 or 12, and I was listening to the game when I was in the locker room and we have fell behind. The Buckeyes have really asserted themselves over the last couple minutes and now lead by a point. And then I told him I had to go back when we fell behind. And when I came back out... The Buckeyes continuing to show patience here on the offensive end. Hey, hang on to your hats, folks. Magic Johnson is checking back into this game. Oh, this kid is special. He's really making a statement in front of this Spartan crowd. And the Buckeyes... The crowd just went so crazy. I mean, I never experienced anything like it. The Jenison Fieldhouse is in an absolute frenzy. Magic Johnson, shades of Willis Reed, back on the floor after the injury. You gotta love it, going down with the injury and coming with back. With Magic's the dramatic return, the Spartans would gain an incredible upset and a new leader. I've always led, and I don't know anything else but being a leader. I don't know how to follow. in East Lansing. But the season would not end in euphoria as the eventual champion Kentucky Wildcats would narrowly defeat them. And down court in a hurry comes Irvin Johnson. Long shot at the buzzer. No good. Put back up. No good. Kentucky has won the NCAA Mid-East Regional. Well, the Irvin Johnson Magic Show is closed for the season. The year had ended, and the burning question on everybody's mind was would Irvin take his magic show to the NBA? Everyone just assumed that Irvin would turn professional. Irvin did not want to turn professional. We had came so close my first year, and so I said, I'm going back because I didn't accomplish what I came here to accomplish. With the single-mindedness of purpose, Magic ventured into his sophomore season hoping to make his visions of an NCAA title a reality. But the specter of college basketball's other great star loomed on the horizon, and Indiana State's Larry Bird was keeping a watchful eye on the competition. I remember we had probably 20 guys at my house, and we was watching on TV, and we all agreed that's the best team we ever seen. Michigan State would live up to Bird's billing as they sliced through the NCAA tournament with demoralizing ease, readying themselves for their date with destiny. And the ball game is over. The Spartans are in the final game for the first time in Michigan State history. And as Magic braced for battle with Bird, he would not only practice to play against him, he would practice as him. The day before our game, we didn't have anyone on our scouting team who was capable of playing Larry Bird. I said, well, coach, we almost play alike. Won't you have me just play Larry Bird? On the eve of their confrontation, they had become kindred spirits, cast in each other's image. I was shooting like Larry Bird that day. I'm not kidding you. I was shooting, going out of bounds and making them. He played one heck of a bird, and we had a much tougher time guarding him than we did Larry Bird the next night. The scene was now set for a clash not only between teams, but also between Titans. Good evening, everyone. We are getting set here for what promises to be one tremendous championship game for the National Intercollegiate Basketball title. And it wasn't Indiana State versus Michigan State anymore. It was, it was Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson, and that's what it turned out to be. Those who believe in magic and those who appreciate the beauty of a rare bird have come to see basketball's best and witness the crowning of a new national champion. Magic had shared the spotlight with Bird for an entire season. Rebound Johnson. Magic Johnson with the ball. And now, in 1979's ultimate game, Irvin was more determined than ever to shine alone. Bird tried valiantly to lift his sycamores. But Magic was not going to be denied. 
he would achieve his season-long goal, and Michigan State would have his first national championship. Here it comes, the alley of We didn't get beat because we were the better team and they upset us. We got beat because they were the best team. They were the best team in college basketball at that time. championship. I got it. He cannot get it back. These two basketball phenoms had crossed paths for the first and last time in college. Bird was off to the NBA, and experts were abuzz with speculation that Magic would do the same. The rumors say that you've played your last college game and that you're heading away from Michigan State. You first. I be turning pro. Los Angeles Lakers select Urban Magic Johnson, Michigan State, 6'8", 200 pounds. Magic's new home couldn't have suited him more. He was a story that was made for Hollywood, and he was the perfect leading man. On the eve of his very first game, I would not impose upon any rookie in all of professional sports to talk to you. But I want you to know that this man has a smile that lights up a television screen from here to Bangor, Maine. His name is Magic Johnson, and Magic, it's a delight to have you aboard in the NBA. Thank you. I'm very excited to start my first game, and I think our team is ready, and uh, it's going to be a great season for the Los Angeles Lakers. All right. Now. Two, five, three, three, take eight. Johnson would make his professional debut in front of a national television audience. And as the game developed, Magic showed why he was not only tailor-made for this town, but also for this team. Three, intercepted by Magic. And here he comes from behind the back, a fake. Oh, the pass, here we go. And fittingly, this historic game would end in dramatic fashion. Ford sends it to Curry. Magic was so fired up, and uh, I was like, geez, uh, I, we can't be at this emotional pitch for the whole season, or we, we won't make it to uh, Thanksgiving. I'm hugging him, I'm grabbing his neck, choking him. I'm going crazy, yeah. And so he gets me in the locker room and say, you know what, Irvin? Don't ever do that again. We only got 81 more games to go, so. <laughs> but Magic's passion for the game could not be kept inside as the exuberant rookie continues to do what came naturally. Look at Magic. <laughs> he won't let him up. People realized that uh, that's how I was, and that's how it was going to be. Johnson's infectious enthusiasm would quickly win over his new team. Magic Johnson does his high-five slapping act. And a fan we need your exuberancy uh, on the court, telling us what to do and cheering us and leading us. And you can make us an awfully good team if you give that to us. But just 13 games into his first season, Magic's new coach, Jack McKinney, would meet with a debilitating accident. And it would be up to another first-year coach to keep the Lakers on track. A nervous Paul Westhead. Not as nervous as he was perhaps yesterday. But Magic quickly calmed any early jitters, and the Laker Express didn't miss a beat as they cruised into the heart of the season. I'm very excited about uh, the big crowd and about being here in Boston for my first time. Magic would lead the Lakers past Larry Bird Celtics in both of their meetings and ease into the All-Star break, where he would gain the distinction of being the first rookie ever to start in an All-Star game. Magic comes up for the West. Magic tosses it back. As the season gave way to the playoffs, the games got bigger, as did Magic's role. Magic Johnson had begun to show that he wanted to lead his team, especially in key situations. 23 seconds to go. We're going to have a new Western Conference 
champion. From the corner, DJ, three-pointer, short, loose. Magic pops it. Magic runs it down. There's a new king of the West. You seem like you're a little bit out of breath. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm so happy, you know, and later uh, that I get a chance to play for the championship. It's beautiful. Irvin was living out his fantasy as a real-life drama was about to unfold. From the fabulous form in Inglewood, California, another capacity crowd to see the battle for the supremacy of professional basketball, the championship of the world, the NBA crown. Through the eyes of a young man barely out of his teens, the NBA Finals could seem an awesome, if not intimidating, spectacle. Featuring two great teams and two basketball immortals, it seemed improbable that the focus would be on a wide-eyed rookie. But still, Magic Johnson was ready. Impervious to the pressure, L.A.'s fearless floor leader simply did what he had done all season long as he continually ignited the Lakers at both ends of the floor. Deftly directing L.A.'s offense, Johnson unleashed the league's most unstoppable force, tormenting Philadelphia with every shot. Magic gave him the ball, just brought it to him all day. Skyhook, 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 Skyhook. I went home that night, I was in the bed. Skyhook, Skyhook, scared for the Skyhook. And in game five, it seemed as if Johnson and Jabbar were on the verge of overwhelming the Sixers. But a cruel twist of fate would quickly change the complexion of the series. Kareem turns underneath, puts it up and scores on a finger roll. Five for Kareem Hurt. Kareem turned an ankle. Kareem is hurt. I don't think Kareem is going to be able to go anymore right now. When he twisted his ankle, I don't think my hope went out the window, but a big portion of it did, I'd say. The Lakers would be forced to play without their most potent weapon. You see magic, and you can see concern in his face. Now, the burden of carrying the attack would fall squarely on magic. With this pivotal game at stake, the Lakers would rally around Johnson. Here comes Magic, running the team. A great pass inside to Cooper with Magic Johnson. Magic had successfully stemmed the tide until Kareem's return. He will try to play despite a painful sprained ankle. Now he would quickly shift gears and assume his customary role. With their stirring victory, the Lakers took a 3-2 series lead. But their celebration was tempered by the almost unthinkable notion of facing the Sixers without their captain. All along, they've been saying, Cap's not going to play, Cap's not going to play, they want to rest him. But in my mind, I'm saying that's what they want to tell the media. Kareem's going to give us that big spiritual lift. But that lift would never come. The league's most valuable player would not make the trip to Philadelphia. When you lose that piece out of the equation, you say to yourself, how in the world can we compete with these people? You know, everyone thought it, it was going to be the seventh game in Los Angeles, except Magic. Once again, it would be up to Magic to find a way to rally his team and to seize the moment. I sat in Kareem's seat on the plane, and I told the guys on the plane, and you can ask them all, don't fear, because 32 is here. The fate of L.A. hung in the balance as Magic took center stage. A young man by the name of Magic Johnson is going to start at center. And when Magic jumped in the center with Caldwell Jones, I actually almost started laughing because I was kept wondering, what is going through Philly's mind? Ball goes up high now, high. With the championship at stake, the Lakers had pinned their hopes on a rookie. And while most would have crumbled beneath that crushing burden, Magic flourished as he set about dismantling the Sixers with his precision passes. Another assist for Magic. And another rebound. And spectacular shots. Under pressure to the left hand came Johnson that time.
It was his show. He jumped center and then he went down the low posts and, and uh, he ended up scoring 42 points, 15 rebounds. And if he didn't score, he set Wilkes up to score. Magic, one has to Wilkes. A beautiful pass by the rookie. Magic dominated the play and became a uh, unstoppable uh, force. Oh, the rolling hook shot by the youngest. Every shot was a big shot. Every rebound was a big rebound. Every pass was a big pass. I think I had lived for the moment like this, and finally I'm caught in it. Magic comes inside, dishes, wants Wilkes, beautiful pass. Is he unbelievable? Magic's hot and he knows it. Oh, what a pass to Cooper, who scored! Magic will come down the baseline, and Dawkins tied him up, scored, and sent Magic to the line. Right now. We played everybody conceivable against him. And here's a guy that, what was he, 20 years old? Here comes the 20-year-old rookie down the middle. Dawkins went to him and scored and sent him to the line. For Magic and the Lakers, their moment was at hand. There it is. It's over. And the most valuable player is Magic Johnson. He starts at center, plays forward and guard, and leads the Los Angeles Lakers to a world championship, 123-107 over Philadelphia. Magic had not only won a championship, he had entered the annals of basketball history. The performance that Magic Johnson put on that night was truly one of the great, great performances. I wish he stayed in school another year, you know, where we would have won a championship. You know, that was still today my greatest game probably in the NBA, and it probably always will be. Championships had become almost commonplace for Magic. In only four years, he had garnered titles at three different levels, and the basketball world wondered what he could possibly do for an encore. Go to win some more. Loose ball with 15 seconds, and Johnson has it, and he throws up a play, and he does. Magic Johnson throws up a play to tie it up and look at him. And I don't even think he looked at the back. I only play to win, that's it. Magic in the front court, still going down the middle, in deep, all the way, backhand layup, good foul. Uh, Magic is doing all oh, anything he wants to do out there. It would take Magic only two seasons to win another title. By the end of 1982, he would own two championships, two finals MVPs, and a growing legion of fans. Magic was changing the NBA and doing it with his own unselfish style. What he brought to the team was, you know, he simply voluntarily cooperated to make everybody better basketball players, and he did it with a real great spirit. Congratulations. Tell me what Bob McAdoo has meant to this team. I tell you, an offensive weapon coming off the bench. A big man who can do it all, run the court, block shots too. He's just a big weapon, I tell you. I'm just glad that we had him on our team. All right, the celebration continues here in the Laker locker room. The Lakers' winning ways had made them America's most sought-after team. Magic 106. And Magic, its newest hero. Like the Magic Man. Listen, it's magic. They're everywhere. The high-profile superstar was showered with national attention as his captivating style and smile ushered him into the national spotlight. Fans around the country flocked in record numbers to catch a glimpse of basketball's hottest commodity and his most spellbinding show. And in L.A., the faithful were consumed by magic hysteria as the team itself seemed to personify their irrepressible star. They were unpredictable, unstoppable, and sometimes unbelievable. I don't believe my eyes! What a play! My eyes get so big, and then I'm coming and saying, OK, what am I going to do? You know, you're shaking, you're baking. That's when I'm at my best. You got an assist here. Watch it. Who's going to get it? There was no rhyme or reason to the fast break. We just took off and running. And everybody was like, oh, I got to get me a lane. I got to get me a lane. Because we knew if you got out there and you feel the lane, Magic could get you the basketball. He's this magnet that's just drawing everybody out there. You're never really out of it. If you get out and run, there's a chance for you to score. Magic ran rough shot over the entire league and enjoyed doing it. I just don't think there'll ever be another 6'9" point guard that smiles while he, uh, he humiliates you.
With their floor general leading the charge, the Laker attack was as devastating as it was dazzling, and ardent admirers could only marvel at his on-court wizardry. Meanwhile, an old adversary was attracting a comparable legion of supporters, and in 1984, these two great rivals would go head to head once again. And this time, it would be for the NBA's ultimate prize. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. <laughs> for the first time, these two superstars would compete for an NBA crown, and the whole country turned its eyes to them. You know, you walk around and everybody, everybody is talking about this, this series. We had more writers and TV people and made it so big. I mean, everything was written with uh, Bird versus Magic, Magic versus Bird, that whole thing. And it was so intense, so intense. Well, the stars, get your picture with Larry Magic. And for two weeks, Everybody in America wanted to be me, wanted to be Larry Bird, wanted to be one of the guys that was in this game. As the series began, a strange feeling of deja vu gripped both men. As Magic and his Lakers quickly took the upper hand, beating the Celtics on their own floor and taking away their home court advantage. In game two, the Lakers looked to take control of the series as the waning seconds would see them possess both the lead and the ball. But both would be smashed away. I mean, stay tough. Stay tough. That's what it's about. With eight seconds left, Magic felt he had more than enough time to ensure victory. But for perhaps the first time in his career, he was wrong. Boston would go on to win in overtime. And the Lakers' stranglehold on the series seemed suddenly broken. Game four would again present Magic with a chance to break the Celtics' backs. And again, he would squander it. Johnson misses a boat, Bird the rebound, and the Celtics want a timeout. For the second time, Magic had not delivered in the clutch and as game four went into overtime, a growing feeling of horror began to grip the Lakers. Be sure they won't let the time run out this time as they did in game two. Magic takes the ball and they throw, Magic throws Look it away. At this. Three seconds, intercepted by Perry. We're used to coming through at that moment and wanting it and making the hoop or the play. Uh, you don't know how to handle it when you don't. One of the game's greatest clutch performers was living a bad dream. But as the series stretched to seven games, it would turn into his worst nightmare. Boy, does it hurt when you know it's not going to be your right. It was a tough summer for me to deal with what had happened. I replayed those plays over and over again in my mind. I didn't perform, I didn't come through. So when you know in your heart you didn't come through, it stays with you a long time. You know, guys like Magic, you just sort of look at them. If they look sad, you sort of want to do something to help. But I know that the following year he was going to come back, and he did. Your soul search, and then it makes you stronger. So in 85, you come out, you come out ready. You come out with avengers. Some thought Magic would not rebound from hardship. Magic pushes past the leader. They were sorely mistaken. Stripped the ball. Great play by Magic. Magic rebounding. Long pass to McGee. McGee comes down in with the penetration and the basket. What you have to do is gain their respect and earn their respect, and that's what I did. I worked hard. I worked harder than anybody. I, I, I just went to exhaustion if I had to. He knew exactly what was on the line, and I think he took it more upon himself. 
than the rest of us. And Magic pretty much just ignited everybody else to have a great year. And we just all just followed in his footsteps. Worthy blocked the ball. Lambus oh. picks it up, and here's Scott. It's three on one. Magic in the middle to Worthy. Oh. He leads by action, and he makes you believe that uh, he's going to win, and he's going to pull you along with him. Magic felt that he owed his teammates a championship, and as he led them through the 1985 season and back to the finals, he was determined to repay the debt. <laughs> you know, this is it, first week of June, and it always happens to be Boston Celtics and L.A. Laker time. As he headed for a rematch of last year's championship series, Magic would be afforded the perfect chance to banish his ghost or be consumed by them. The Los Angeles Lakers hope to achieve something they have never done. The NBA title is on the line at Boston Garden. For decades, the Celtics had dominated the Lakers. Now, in one series, Magic would seek redemption for himself and his franchise. But as game one began, history seemed destined to repeat itself. Second. Color this game green so far. Lakers are totally out of their game right now, and they're not used to this. Instead of redemption, the Lakers would find humiliation in a crushing defeat that would later be called the Memorial Day Massacre. No contest, game one. Give it to the Boston Celtics by a wide margin. Everything happened to us in that game, and after that, I honestly started believing in all the Boston uh, mastery that goes on, the little leprechaun and all that. Oh, Magic Johnson is one individual who I have to give a lot of credit to, because whenever anything arose at that time, he was always there to take care of things. Here's the man under the gun. He's got to pick this club up emotionally. They all look to Magic, and he's got to come into that game with total enthusiasm and execution. Left side of Magic. Magic all the way. Spin it up and in. Don't let him take off. What a pass, Magic Johnson. He really hates to lose. I mean, he really does. It's, it's, it's a passion with him to, to win and win at all costs. Playing with fierce determination, Magic would lead an emotional Laker charge. And as they overwhelmed Boston in games two and three, L.A. would take control of the series and restore their pride. Long shot, hook, in and out, and there's Magic Johnson. In game four, Bird would try to stem the Laker tide. Austin waited for L.A. to begin to crack, but Magic would make sure that they would wait in vain. The Lakers answered the Celtics' true grit with a fierce, determined performance. And it's 3-2 to two in favor of Los Angeles as we go back to Boston. Welcome to Boston Garden. And will it be a victory party for the Los Angeles Lakers, or will it be a survival for the Boston Celtics? I started out the morning, didn't feel very good about the game. But as the day wore on, I started to think to myself, well, you know, we have some other great players in this team. Here is Irvin Magic Johnson, who has waited for this chance for a year, the loss stuck in his craw. Magic Johnson is so competitive, a leader. And he started out that basketball game like, um, fellas, I'm going to lead you to the promised land tonight. With Magic leading the way, the Lakers would close out the series in six games, becoming the first team in history to defeat the Celtics in the finals on their home floor. This man, Magic Johnson, played this season with a mission for the Lakers, and it's about to pay off. Magic's mission was complete. He had won a championship for himself and for history. At that point, we were over eight playing the Celtics, and to finally beat them, it wasn't a monkey, it was an eight and then some on our, on our backs. <laughs> I mean, King Kong size. Magic Johnson, who finds redemption, Tommy, as you say, a year later.
From the parquet floor of the Boston Garden to the White House front lawn, Magic's dramatic victory left no one untouched. Does America believe in magic? You bet we do. The whole country was under his spell. And its children had found a new role model that they could look up to. So play it smart. Don't fall out with drugs. Yeah! I love kids. You know, what they want is that they want you to first give them some time. They want to be heard. And if you can give them that, you'll have them in the palm of your hand. Hey! You got any requests, just call in. I take all requests. And as always, Magic found time to respond to all callers. He's still the same loving, kind um, person that he was when he was growing up. My mother made me realize that uh, you can gain a lot from helping other people. The man who's responsible for this entire evening, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps the most glowing testimony to his gift of giving has been the Midsummer Night's Magic Weekend, which benefits the United Negro College Fund. Right now, this is bigger than any championship I've ever won, because this will stay longer than that. Established in 1986, this gala event has been the single largest annual fundraiser in UNCF history, raising over $4 million. Okay. It's time to throw down. Are we ready? All right, Magic gets the rebound from this shot. He can tie it up. Each year, the NBA's brightest stars have come out to lend their support and to pay tribute to a man who has made his vision a reality on and off the court. He was an incredible leader. You know, if this country had people to lead this country that, it, that were as strong as committed to what he's committed to, it would be a very special person that was leading this country. One has to look no further than Lancy to find the wellspring of Magic's values. My father is a very unique man. He always talked to us, uh, play with us, and do anything, you know. Uh, he was always like a, another big brother to us, really. And in many ways, Irvin Sr. has always been a source of inspiration to his children. He's an unbelievable father, and he had a great influence on my life then as well as now. You know, he showed me that anything I wanted in life, I had to work for it. Embodying his father's work ethic and selflessness, Irvin would win his first MVP award in 1987 and pay homage to the man who made it possible. This award belongs to my dad because of all what he has done for me. I'm living for him in a sense, uh, playing in the NBA. And uh, so I, I dedicate and I'm gonna give this to him and uh, I just want to thank you. Ironically, Irvin had earned his first MVP by unveiling an aspect of his game that went beyond his father's teachings. Irvin Johnson, as the most unselfish player maybe in the history of the game, became a little selfish, and he had to. It was his time uh, to start being the main cannon. They finally turned the team over to me and let me do my thing, let me show the other side of uh, Magic Johnson. In his MVP season, Magic Johnson had been asked to shoulder more of the scoring burden for his team. Displaying his versatility, he would respond by elevating a dimension of his game, a prospect that was frightening for the rest of the NBA. Giving Irvin the green light to uh, really dominate the game offensively made a Everybody changed their game plan when they uh, had to play us. And now, equipped with Hollywood's original lethal weapon, the Lakers have become the most feared team in the land. Though Magic had performed more as a soloist in 1987, he still managed to orchestrate Showtime to perfection. I think magic is showtime. 
showtime. Thurman Magic Johnson. Woo! How did he see it? And that. Must be magic. It's got class, it's got style. Magic couldn't draw it better on a blackboard. If he came on once a week like the college show, I sit there and watch. Once he got here, I think Showtime began. And though 1987 had seen many changes, it would end with a familiar scenario. I heard Converse made a pair of bird shoes for last year's MVP. Yep. Well, they made a pair of magic shoes for this year's MVP. Okay, Magic, show me what you got. You know, nobody gets you up more than Boston. As long as Larry's on the other side I'm, and I'm on this side, it's gonna always be that. We've had a lot of battles along the way, but we've always had respect because we come to win every night. We don't take a night off. We both make each other play our best game. You know, and that's the best thing about this Bird-Johnson rivalry. Give me room. I'm going high, so let it get up in the air. As the 87 finals began, it became evident that Showtime was still playing at the forum. Magic to Worthy. And Boston had a front row seat. Bird courageously tried to keep the Celtics close, but Magic would refuse to let up as the Lakers took the series' first two games. And as the venue shifted, the duel continued. You always have somebody in life that you want to be and you want to compete against. And Larry Bird is the guy. After dropping game three, the Lakers found themselves in a furious struggle for control of the series. Bird goes around Worthy. As game four would see two living legends Worthy locked in a historic it. game of can you top this? Open his aim. Bird goes for three. The Lakers When the pressure get tight, there are only a few players that want the basketball, and Magic wants the ball. In the game's final moments, Johnson would find himself not only with the ball, but also with the chance to put an end to the decade's most compelling rivalry. To the left goes Magic. He's got it. He didn't shoot it. Five seconds left. Magic down the middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Good! Magic's just a great basketball player. He's the best I've ever seen, you know. I, unbelievable, I don't know what to say. Closing out the series in six games, Magic would once again be doused in championship splendor. With one dramatic shot, he had assured himself of his fourth title and of his preeminent place on the list of NBA superstars. People are starting to recognize him for exactly what he is, is the total best player in this game. But Magic would have little time to rest on his laurels. His next challenge was a historic one. No NBA champion has repeated since 1969. And, yet... and his coach would boldly declare it. And I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. Fueled by Riley's words and with Magic at the controls, the high-octane Lakers raced out of the gate and never looked back. from midcourt made a 43-foot bounce pass. Woo! How did he see him? Led by Johnson, L.A. was playing like a team possessed by destiny, and even the most formidable of opponents could not prevent the inevitable. Celtics lead it by one. Oh, Compiling the league's best record, the Lakers rolled confidently into the playoffs. But the road to the finals would not be an easy one as the fired-up Jazz took them to seven. 
And in the conference finals, Dallas looked to bring down the curtain on the magic show until Johnson took matters into his own hands. His shot is no good to rebound the Magic. Magic long pass to Kareem under the basket. Slammed up. With the forum echoing this season's rally cry, Magic would bid farewell to a close friend and begin to ready himself for another friendly foe who also had designs on an NBA title. I love him. He's my friend. And it's nothing personal, but I want to beat the Lakers. For 19 years, no NBA team had repeated as champion. Now, Magic was not going to let even a friend stand in the way of his historic quest for back-to-back -back titles. Isaiah and the Pistons would make it clear that they would not easily accommodate Johnson's lofty dreams. Interception on the pass. But though Detroit would convincingly grab game one in L.A., Magic would make game two his own. Overcoming the flu and a ferocious piston defense, Johnson wheeled his way to victory. And as the series moved to Detroit, the Lansing native would play in front of some familiar fans, and he would engineer a familiar result. Magic found worthy through eight or nine players. Stealing game three, the Laker floor general recaptured home court advantage for L.A. And even though Detroit would win game five and take a three to two series lead back to the forum, Magic would make it painfully evident that this would not be their year. As he led L.A. to victory in a game that was grueling both physically and emotionally. It was hard, but winning takes presence over everything. Friendship. Uh, you can always be friends after the series is over. Pleasantries would be put on hold for one more game as Magic penetrated the Pistons' vaunted defense with focused intensity. Underneath the Scott, Scott scores! Great assist for Magic Johnson. The preseason prediction had been realized. And finally, Magic could revel in his moment of glory. The game is over. In less than a decade, the Lakers had won five NBA titles, firmly establishing themselves as the team of the 80s and as one of sports' great dynasties. Back to back. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that. By the end of the 80s, Magic had become recognized as the greatest winner of his era. The one constant in the 80s was Irvin Johnson. It was uh, Dr. J and Magic early in the 80s. Uh, they played twice. And then in the middle of the 80s, it was Larry and Magic again playing twice in the finals. And Isaiah had his chance in the late 80s. And, and now Michael Jordan. And it's interesting how it seems as though Magic has invited all of these guys at least two times to the finals because he's been the only constant. And I think that in itself speaks for itself. You've heard of winning time, but this is magic time. When the game's on the line, Magic Johnson always seems to take over. He had captured every trophy, earned every accolade, and faced every challenge that basketball could offer him. What an assist, all-time leader, Magic Johnson. I'd like to thank all my former coaches, all my former teammates, and uh, I'd like to also thank the person who really explained to me how to really play this game. And um, if you... If you're listening, Dad, I just want to thank you and tell you that I love you so much. And to Mom, thank you too. And the last but not least, Thank you, fans, for coming out every night and support me. So thank you. And though nothing was left for him to prove as he led the Lakers into the 90s, Magic still showed the same boundless enthusiasm that has been his trademark since his schoolyard days in Lansing. 
he had a dream and he didn't just let that dream just sort of you know, die away. With his consuming passion for the game, Magic has infused his entire sport with his own irrepressible spirit. That name, Magic, is a special name. Whether he is winning championships or lighting up a playground with his infectious smile, for Magic, it will always be showtime. You play this game to win, to have fun, and to make people happy. And if I can accomplish those three things, I've, I've done what I set out to do. I just want to say that uh, I'm gonna miss playing, and uh, I will now become a, a spokesman for the HIV virus. Although he had retired, Magic sensed in the back of his mind a return. I hope that if I do decide to come back, you won't be upset if we did this all over again. So, thank you again. His premature exit has stunned the basketball world. Gone was a player of unsurpassed talent and popularity. But at the 1992 All-Star Game, Magic gave the fans one last glorious goodbye. Welcome to the Orlando Arena in the 1992 NBA All-Star Game. And today, from the Magic Land and the Magic Kingdom, we have a game that will feature the Magic Man. It lasted only a few hours. But it was pure magic to his fans. I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be something special to him on that day because of our friendship and not only did I want to be a part of it, but I wanted to make sure that the rest of the players were a part of it. Touched by the outpouring of emotion from his fellow All-Stars, Magic was determined to make his showcase appearance a memorable one. Magic Johnson! Oh, he is really sharp. Magic from Magic, he knows where you are all the time. I'll find you. What a perfectly timed pass. Oh, my! about this one. There it is. There's the three. He Magic just got his three. In a day that was all his, Magic's greatest moment was saved for last when his friends, one by one, turned the final seconds of the game into a tender tribute. One on one. Isaiah against his buddy Magic. Magic raises his hands triumphantly. They're all taking a shot at the Magic Oh, band. no. It's Jordan against Magic. He was asking for more than he can accept, so I just kind of took it easy. The crowd on its feet. Well, this is a mismatch, and Magic would be the first to admit it. <laughs> and that's two Magic said, bring the next one on. It was great to see him just in heaven again. Six, five, three-pointer. Yes! Oh, my! Can't orchestrate it better than that. But when you're great, you deliver. Maybe you'll see me back, maybe you won't, but I'll remember the, all these good times this afternoon. I'd like to thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you. Magic reveled in the spotlight of yet another MVP performance, one that served as a prelude to his proudest and perhaps greatest basketball moment. As the world looked on, Magic Johnson took center stage at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona. There, he again weaved his unmistakable magic on the court. Play of the night by Magic Johnson. Johnson was in his glory, not only as an Olympian, but as a member of the greatest team ever assembled. And he savored every second of it.
On the way to an epic performance, the U.S. Dream Team dismantled every opponent. There's never been a team like the Dream Team. Never. Magic Johnson was on top of the world. Men's Olympic basketball team, this group may well be the greatest team ever assembled in the history of team sports. Magic expanded his charity work and through his business enterprises continued to improve the lives of people around him. In an effort to entertain and benefit those in needy communities, Magic opened a chain of movie theaters, the first one in South Central Los Angeles. But still, his thirst for the game was overwhelming. He had to come back. And in January of 96, he returned to the Lakers in a moment filled with indescribable emotion. And the main piece, Magic Johnson <laughs> is back. Did you play this night over in your mind last night? Yeah. Last 24 hours? Yeah. What would you like? What? Oh man, it's, just, it's crazy. I don't think that uh, I played it, but it will be nothing like it. It probably won't actually be. One, two, three, the next show is in your town. And now, the crowd on their feet, the warm ups are coming off, and Magic Johnson returns to the NBA. Out to Magic Johnson. And Magic gives the Peeler for a three. Got it. There's his first assist. It won't be his last. That's what they came to see. The Magic coming out of the back door. Isn't that a familiar picture when he starts down the floor with the ball to do, huh? Magic's in deep. Banks it in. The patented penetration goes to coast like Rebound Diva. To Magic. Nice. Ball face. Oh, the Magic is back. And Magic Johnson has made a very successful return to the court. Throws his fist into the air, and all the guys, the Warriors, come over and congratulate him. With Magic once again showcasing his peerless skills on the court, his monumental legacy continues to grow even more. Whenever you talk basketball, even when you talk life, Magic is, is a joy to be around. 